Well, I finally got it. Heroes, Villas and Fiends. The first sort of companion book for uh, In Her Majesty's Name. Uh, for those of you who don't know what In Her Majesty's Name is, it's a miniatures game for any scale, really. But one of the beautiful, beautiful things about it is, is it gives you the ability to create your own companies and even your own weapons. So there's lots of potential. Like um, when I first got a hold of it, I was like, I have to make a, you know, Captain Nemo and his Submariners group, and I have. Uh, no, they're not, on, they're not in my room though. But I'd have, I'd have shown you them. But and I've come up with those rules. So what do we get in Heroes, Villains, and Fiends? Well, let's take a, a quick gander through the book. And I think probably the most interesting thing we've got in here at the moment is you've got two new close combat weapons. Uh, oh yeah, you, we've, they've added a light field gun as well, which is quite interesting now, because if you're playing a um, one of the main army groups, like there's what, you've got the French Foreign Legion, uh, Britain, Prussia, you've got uh, Turkey, Russia now in there, um, you've got the US as well, so there's opportunities now to bring in a sort of a, a light field piece and it's one of those options where in certain situations it's going to be very good, particularly if you're in a defensive situation, that's going to be very good. Um, yeah, you can also now plant bombs as well and set them off. Um, you've got a flare pistol, hand crossbow, and incense burner as well. So it also doubles as a range attack as well. Um, new stuff um, for weird science: uh, clockwork hound, pretty much self-explanatory. You've got a life preserver because one of the new rules in it introduces swimming. Uh, a reliquary, which basically gives you a mystic power of your choice, and a Siberian furs, because um, one of the new campaign hazards is winter cold, and if your guys aren't um, equipped or have special the talents to avoid it, then uh, I think they end up dying, or well, at least they end up, their mobility comes down as well from what I remember. Uh, oh yeah, there are now rules for using boats, there's a lot of different boats rules now, again, rules for swimming there as well, and of course, uh, vehicle transports as well. And then one of the other things, they've got a, uh, a billistery now, so there's um, you know, if you wanted rules for a dog, an elephant, uh, a lion, there's a snake, then a wolf as well. If you wanted to run uh, a scenario where there were werewolves involved, this is there. There's also now companies can now summon uh, demons. So you can summon demon lessers, demons, wolf demons, um, and there's different types of wolf as well. There's a Siberian wolf here as well. There's also, uh, I believe, rules for making your own beasts as well. Uh, so that's quite good. New Mystic Powers. Um, Blizzard, Desert Twister, Water Spout. Uh, they're all exactly the same range. You basically summon a, a Blizzard, really, which is uh, can affect different things. And then Icy Blast. Which is another new mystic power. Uh, new talents, cold proof, fireproof. They're pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, Iron will uh, means you can. Your figure is basically immune to any mystic power. Lightning draw. If your character has a lightning draw for either close combat or ranged weaponry, um, then basically they always attack first. 
Master of Disguise is interesting uh, because basically you can hide one of your guys and you can basically say that that unit is one of your enemies until any point that you want where you can reveal that actually he wasn't and your opponent can control him as well up until you reveal that ah, actually that's actually uh, Sherlock Holmes meticulous planning is quite interesting because basically you can move any one of your opponent's figures so if they're in cover uh, you can pretty much move them out of cover. The you only you can't. The only rule to this is you can't put them in immediate mortal danger. So you can't just put them into a a lava pool, it says here, or, um, or into anything like that. Uh, you can also move them to base contact as well with figures. You have swings a taunt as well. Uh, part of the crowd. Basically, they don't get no sort of like stealth really, uh, and then new companies, and that's what pretty much the majority of the book is uh, is new companies, and there are basically where the new companies hail from. You've got the Dark Continent, which is Africa, uh, the New World, which is America, and then the Old World, which is Europe. So the new companies uh, in here from the Dark Company are you've got Boar Commando, uh, Hunting Party which is led by Sir Alan Quatermain, uh, Queen's Own African Rifles which is basically just your um, your military unit sort of say if you wanted one. Uh, Sons of the Desert which is sort of your um, I was going to say it's not really a Lawrence of Arabia thing because you've got it says here that you can have um, oh no yeah they basically yeah they basically are the sort of the um, Lawrence of Arabia type one you Zulus uh, Never mind. Anyway, then we move on to the New World Apache. Uh, they've got some quite interesting stuff for them. Uh, the High Sierra Gang, which is quite interesting, which they're basically just uh, outlaws. Uh, Lost Diablos, again, they're outlaws. The Virginians, again, sort of like a renegade um, style confederate. You've got the Golden Wheel, which I believe is yeah. Again, they're another outlaw gang. The Pale Riders, the Industrialists, which is um, probably the biggest one in the North American one. And you've got the, the League of Southern Gentlemen, which is uh, quite good, led by Colonel White. <laughs> and they're quite interesting, because they have sort of, here they have uh, Infantry Veteran, and then Infantry Protégé. So your Infantry Veteran has uh, basically one more stat, so your Veteran has uh, four pluck, three fighting, three shooting. Um, he's got a more heavier breastplate as well. And then your protege has uh, five pluck, two shooting, two uh, fighting, and so on. Uh, and then they've also got a, a normal breastplate, a pistol, military rifle, and sword. And of course, there's options as well. And then you've got U Troop, the uh, Northwest Mounted Police, which are Canadian Mounties. Uh, the red, the red set, which is sort of your um, best way to describe them is the sort of Baron Samidi voodoo type troops from what they've got, because they can raise zombies or they can have zombies with them. I don't know if they can actually um, raise anything. They've also got 
a unit called a skin changer where they can turn into beasts, so that's quite interesting. Uh, got your secret service, which are very interesting because they're all equipped with arc pistols and you can change them up to arc rifles. Um, they have quite a lot of um, weird science stuff, so they're quite interesting as a as a group who would you basically use all arc weaponry. Uh, Texas Rangers, pretty much explanatory what they are. Uh, and then you've got the the Army of the Federal Republic of Mexico, uh, Mexican Rebels. Yeah, and that's it for them. And then you've got the Old World, uh, Le Cabot Noir, which is, they're a group of French Royalists. Um trying to get the um, monarchy re back installed. Uh, the Conciati, which are basically the secret um, Vatican group. Um, and you can have Swiss Guard with them. And then you can have the entourage of Vlad Tepes, Prince of Valkyria, which is pretty much obvious it's Dracula. Uh, the Hellfire Club, which they basically think is their demon summoners, uh, mystic powers based. The I'm probably going to butcher this, but the Okiana, which are the secret uh, Russian agency, uh, they've got they've got Rasputin as one of their uh, as one of their options, which is quite interesting. Um, you also can have Cossacks with them as well. Then you can have the Ottoman Imperial Counterintelligence Service. And then this one is quite interesting. You should have the Templars. And all their troops, by looks of it, are basically heavily armoured. Uh, very, They're basically going to be a very slow, heavily armoured uh, gun line. By the looks of it here. And then finally, my favourite troop of all, because I have um, the Society of Thor, and I absolutely love their mechanic, because in their original mechanic they have Jaegers, who basically are uh, really good sharpshooters, except really expensive, um, to a point where you are vastly outnumbered, but if you position yourselves right, um, it doesn't matter because basically you equip your guys with bayonet training, marksmanship, and it doesn't matter if the enemy's in cover because marksman cancels out that, and then uh, bayonet training gives them a plus to fighting value. It makes them incredibly deadly. And so, what is here? Uh, the Society of Thu's Totenkopf Battalion. What do they do? Because I was very interested in what they would be doing. Considering that, again, the original society through the sort of vanilla one they have, uh, when the Jaegers die, they get back and become zombies, which are incredibly hard to kill. Um, so I was like, okay, so what's going to be sort of the alternate society of Thor? Well, it turns out they are gas weaponry based, which is incredibly interesting. Because, again... Uh, gas, um, if you get poisoned by gas, basically any character gets a minus two pluck permanently, I believe, for the rest of the game, from what I can remember off the rules at the top of my head. Um, the main troop for these guys are Sturm Troopen. Uh, they cost about 30 points each, they've got four pluck, two fighting, one shooting, uh, breastplate, military rifle. Bayonet, Breath Preserver, they've all got Breath Preservers. Uh, again, options for them, they can all take gas grenades, uh, they can change out for a flamethrower, they can change out for a machine gun as well. Uh, you can also have the Kaiser Wilhelm uh, Walker in here as well. Um, oh yeah, you can take a rocket gun as well. Uh, the Feeble Well, which is, I think, it's sort of like the Sergeant. Uh, he's basically the same, except he's got uh, two shooting value and he's got leadership plus one, he's got tough 
uh, he's got the same equipment. Then you've got the Captain, which is Leadership 2, uh, and he's got Tough as well, and he's got, uh, again, 3 Pluck, 3 Fighting Value, 2 Shooting Value, costs 44 points, uh, Breastplate, Pistol Saber, Breath Preserver, and then here you sort of your name characters, you've got uh, Dr. Wolf, um, or Wolf, uh, 5 Pluck, 1 Fighting Value, 1 Shooting Value, he's got Anti-Venom, he's a Medic, and he's a Fanatic as well, uh, Breastplate, Pistol, Saber, which is Poisoned, um, Gas Grenades, well he's got 3 gas, gas Grenades automatically in his equipment, uh, I don't know if it actually has. Hmm. Oh, one of the things that I thought would make sense for them is to have, um, since they're a sort of almost poison-based company, was to have them all basically have sort of poisoned uh, weaponry. And then you have the sort of leader, which is uh, Oberst Klimt. Uh, two pluck, four fighting value, two shooting, uh, leadership two, fearless, tough, uh, SCR best play, which is, I believe is an armour of about... 12, 13 I believe, uh, shotgun, short range, axe large, and breath preserver. So basically, up, he gets up close and personal. And really, with this company, that's basically what you want to do. You want to basically charge in, throw your gas grenades at the enemy, and just keep on charging in at them. Because, again, it's sort of, there are rules, I believe, originally, um, where you could have wind, and of course, the gas will move uh, in the direction of the wind. Um, and then here you have you sort of your landscapes, which you have again from the last world, sort of saying, you know, this is what if you're going to have this type of thing, well, then these are the type of things taking consideration. If you're going to play here, like you've got your benefits and your hazards, like uh, the Venetian Plaza, open line of sights, uh, Venice is uh, cramped, heavily populated. So you're going to have um, collateral damage rules in effect and authorities uh, can apply as well. And then there's... Uh, where is it now? Yeah, campaigns. There's Basically it lays out a campaign example. So you can basically play... Uh, yeah, three players from uh, two of the campaigns, the usual campaign, Society of, uh, Society of Thor, Lord Kerr's Incorrigibles and Servants of Ra and it basically just says these are the things and then there's a backwards compatibility thing so there's um, for all the companies in the last one there's uh, they can take this, they can also do this from from the new book which is again quite nice so all in all, basically, if you have In Her Majesty's Name, you've probably already got this. If you don't know what In Her Majesty's Name is, uh, get the rule book. It's incredibly cheap. Uh, I think I got mine for about eleven pounds from um, the games show in Sheffield last year, and then you know the companies. I think the companies, the official companies, are about twenty-five pounds. But North Star started doing unofficial companies, which are quite good. Uh, again, my only complaint is that uh, it's not really a complaint. It's more of a. I'd love to be able to field some of these companies. The only problem is is finding models and figures to be actually able to field them. But that's a, a minor complaint. But again, um, the people that made this, Charles and Craig, that have done it. It's an excellent supplement. Highly, highly recommend it to anyone that plays um, the original In Her Majesty's Name. Or if you play Wargaming in general and you like a bit of a, a twist. The rules are, again, the rules are very simple to, put, to do and play. And to be honest, what more do you need? And again, I'm not saying, even if it is, even if, you know, even don't... Just because I've said it's simple... There is a lot of strategy involved in it, and that's the good thing. It's simple, but there's a lot of strategic depth, particularly um, depth when you're looking into like what options do you take, uh, and things like that. So, 
there is depth when you go into it. So yeah, go out, buy it. If you haven't bought it, go out, try it. I highly recommend it.